You might have heard that Java is a strongly typed language, but what does that actually mean? Especially if you started with Java to learn programming, it might not mean much at all to you. Is being strongly typed a good thing or a bad thing? And what does it actually mean to you, the programmer, as you develop your Java programs? We'll talk about all of that with examples in this video. My name's John, and I'm a lead Java software engineer. I also have a full Java course available in a link down in the description if you're interested. There you'll find over eight hours of exclusive videos covering dozens of Java topics. So if you haven't already, go check it out. First, of course, what exactly does being strongly typed mean? Well, that term is one of those things that nerds tend to argue a lot about. They just mean that Java is very strict about enforcing data types. If you make a variable, Java is going to make sure that you tell it explicitly what type that variable is. And after that, it'll keep an eagle eye on it to make sure you never change that variable to any other type. Once a variable is declared, its data type will never change. So for example, when you create a variable for an int, you have to tell Java explicitly int my number equals 10. Java needs to be told that this variable is an int. And if you take that away, Java goes, I can't resolve this my number you've given me with absolutely no type information at all. How am I supposed to figure that out? So you put in int and it goes, ah, okay, int, thank you. Now there is one small exception where starting with Java 10, Java can sometimes infer the data type of a local variable without you explicitly telling it. So for example, here we could actually change int to var. And Java sees, oh, you didn't explicitly tell me this was an int, but I can see here that you're immediately assigning an int value to it when you declare it. So that tells me it's an int, thanks. But even here, the type of this my number variable isn't ambiguous at all to the compiler. This my number will still start out as an int and will always be an int. So even with this feature, Java is no less strongly typed than it was before. Anyway, once you declare this variable, Java will continue to make sure that this my number only ever holds an int for the rest of its existence. For example, if after this you try to assign my number to be quesadilla, the compiler will say, nah, I don't think so. A quesadilla, although delicious, is not a valid int. Try again, sir. So in Java, it's the compiler that's making sure that you're obeying all type rules across the board all the time. And because Java is doing this at compile time, in addition to being a strongly typed language, that means it's also what's called a statically typed language. These two terms, strongly typed and statically typed, they're often confused with each other, but they're not really the same. Being strongly typed just means that Java strictly enforces its type rules. But being statically typed means it's strictly enforcing those type rules at compile time specifically. Now, if you've only ever coded in Java or any other strong and statically typed language, maybe this all seems like, well, duh. Of course you can't just write code that assigns a variable with some type other than the type it was declared with. That would be absolute anarchy. What self-respecting programming language could allow such madness to compile? Well, actually other languages can and do strictly enforce their typing rules, but they might do it later at runtime instead of compile time. Let me show you what I mean. This may be the first time ever that a programming language other than Java has been shown on this channel. So I think to rank historic events by how noteworthy they are, it goes something like moon landing, fall of the Roman empire, John codes in Python. You'll be telling your grandchildren where you were when you saw this. Now, as we said, of course, in Java, you always have to declare your variable types like int my number equals 10. But in Python, you don't. You just say my number equals 10. And also, no semicolon. It's a crazy world of programming languages out there. Python will always infer the data type of a variable based on what value you give it. Not only that, though, you can also do this. My number equals burger. And that's fine. Python just goes, whatever, got it. My number is a string now. Now that's because Python is a dynamically typed language. So you never have any explicit type declarations. You never say this is an int or a string or a cat or anything like that. It figures it all out at runtime as the program is running. And as we've shown here, it's also flexible. So a variable's data type can just change based on whatever value you give it. And Python doesn't care. It'll just make it happen. 
And what people like about that is they can quickly whip up some prototype code without the extra characters of having to define your data types. The trade-off, of course, is that Python doesn't catch potential type errors until runtime, and then if there's a problem, it'll slam face first into a wall. So you can have something like x equals hello, and then y equals x plus three. And it doesn't show any errors here. But then when you go to actually run it, it says, oh no, you can't concatenate a string to an int. Those types aren't compatible. What are you thinking? In Java, those kinds of type mismatches won't even be able to compile. So you won't run into those kinds of unexpected type issues at runtime. One important thing to note, though, is that even with this flexibility, Python is not considered a weakly typed programming language. It's still considered to be strongly typed because it does enforce its typing rules. It just does it during runtime instead of compile time, so it's dynamically typed instead of statically typed. So what exactly would be a weakly typed language then? Well, it would be one that is way more forgiving when it comes to types. One that plays fast and loose with the rules, letting you do just whatever kind of wacky crap you want, and then figuring out some way to accomplish whatever ridiculous thing you're asking it to do. So a great example is JavaScript, the famous web scripting language having nothing at all to do with Java except sharing its name. Basically, how it works in JavaScript is whatever you tell it to do, it'll find some way to give it a shot. So for example, if you put in var result equals three plus two in quotes, let's write the result to the console so we can see what it comes up with, console.log result. So right now it's not giving any sort of syntax error, but what is it going to do here? Is it gonna convert the three to a string and spit out 32, or is it going to convert the two to an int and spit out five? And the answer is, it is absolutely going to do one of those things and give you an answer. So let's go ahead and run this, and we see that it converts the three to a string, concatenates them, and gives you 32. But what if we changed this plus to a minus. So if we run that, well now it converts this 2 to an int and subtracts 3 minus 2 and gives you 1. So it does kind of the opposite of what it did before. Okay, so what about 3 times 2 in quotes? Let's run that. Okay, so that time it converted the 2 to an int and then multiplied them together. But now what if we really threw it for a loop? Let's try to multiply 3 times burger and see what it does. Now, of course, if we did this in Java, it would just laugh in our face. You can't multiply an int with a string? No, I'm not compiling that garbage. Give me something that at least makes some kind of sense, but not JavaScript. JavaScript goes, oh, what? Oh, we're multiplying an int with burger? Okay, yeah, no, no, that sounds like an awesome idea. Totally makes sense. I can totally see why you would wanna do that. I'll give it a shot and let you know what I get. And so if you run it, it gives NAN not a number. So instead of blowing up with a type mismatch error at compile time like Java would, or at runtime like Python would, it says, okay, I did my very best to multiply three times burger, but because nothing made sense and it was pretty much impossible, I just came up with not a number. But I didn't throw any exceptions. Are you proud of me? JavaScript with its weak typing is like a faithful puppy just dying to please its owner, willing to try and do whatever you ask it to do, no matter how ridiculous it is. And Java, with its strong typing, is like a cat. It's like, hmm, what? Oh, you asked me to do what? Now why in the world would I want to do something that ridiculous? No, no, just no. Now give me my dinner and try again when you have something that makes sense. Then it marches off somewhere to lay down in the sun, showing you its butt with its tail in the air. Maybe that's where all the cat stuff in this Java channel comes from. As always, if you enjoyed this video or learned something, please let me know by leaving a like and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss each new video. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it more than anything. See you next time.